What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Torino Career Mode. This is episode number 56 and we start today's episode off with a couple of World Cup qualifiers with Italy. Uh, we beat Ireland in the first one and then we drew with Slovenia in the second one, a goalless draw uh, in this one away from home. So one win and one draw in these two qualifiers. So far four games in the World Cup qualifying group, three wins and one draw but I'm not too sure whether that's going to be enough for me to keep my job as Italy manager because of the very, 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 very disappointing uh, group stage exit in the European Championships. I'm pretty sure that the Italian FA won't keep me on once my contract runs down in the next couple of weeks, but even so, we'll have to wait and see. You never know. Maybe they'll still want to keep me here just because I don't know, I've got a few of their players and they want to see me uh, manage uh, the uh, the players in the country for the uh, the World Cup and hopefully I'll do a better job. Can't do much worse, can I? But uh, So we take on Bologna for the first game of today's episode here uh, in this Serie A of course, in the last game, we drew with Roma away from home at the Stadio Olimpico in a first versus second clash. The man on the ball right now, Dybala, grabbed us the equalising goal in stoppage time as we were lucky to make sure we wouldn't lose for the first time this season. And Dybala hit the post there for one of the first chances of the game. And then the follow-up shot was well saved by the goalkeeper from Alexandro. So still Torino nil, Bologna nil. But another good chance here in the 41st minute as Lorenzo Motta finds Danilo. Has space to shoot from range and it goes just wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. So quite a few good chances for us in the first half and on the stroke of half time another good one here we swing in this corner towards Maximovic but again the goalkeeper makes a really good save and turns it behind for a corner so still goalless go in this game going into the break but 20 minutes after the restart with the score still goalless we had a good chance to open the scoring here as Poloski gets on the ball plays that wide towards Keita uh, one of our new signings in the summer transfer window takes around his man with double step over gets himself inside I was about to shoot then got taken down and the referee awards a penalty to Torino as well so so definite penalty this one. You guys know whenever we get penalties and we're not too sure, we'll chip them down the middle. But this one, no debate whatsoever. Clear contact as Keita hits the deck. So great chance from the spot here to make it 1-0 to Torino as the clock was about to tick over to 69 minutes as it was still 0-0. Dybala stands up to take it and scores it as well. Not really sure who's going to be the penalty taker this season. In the first season, it was Poloski. In the second season, it was Immobile. Neither of them did bad jobs whatsoever, but I feel like I should have a habit of changing the penalty taker season after season just to keep it fresh. Dybala will probably take the penalties this year and he scores this one which I believe is his first as he makes it Torino 1, Bologna 0 here and does open the scoring, get his 7th goal of the Serie A so far and it was also how the game would finish as well, Torino 1 at Bologna 0 so we won the game for a penalty and it was the only goal of the game yes but as you can see with the stats we controlled the game and uh, Bologna didn't have a single shot in the entire match. It was one of those where like you knew once you got a goal the game was effectively over because the away side they, they even when it was 1-0 they were still playing defensive you know they were never coming out and trying to get more goals it was more damage limitation uh, even so Lorenzo Motta was my player in a match the first time he's one player in a match for us since coming out of the academy so pleased with that and uh, again a win which I think we definitely deserved and great to bounce back after that draw against Roma with a victory in the league in the second game of today's episode here the second of three games in today's episode it's going to be one of the biggest games of the season we're taking on Real Madrid away from home here at the Bernabeu in the Champions League group stage third game. Of course, we won the opening two match days against St Etienne and Feyenoord. Now we take on Real Madrid away from home at the Bernabeu. Really, really excited for this game. And of course, it is going to be the most difficult one of the group, or so you'd expect anyway, taking on one of the best sides in the world here away from home. The first chance would fall to us in the 20th minute though as Dybala plays it through towards Immobile. He holds the ball up and gives it towards Hakan Shalanolu. And in the last episode, I talked about this guy and I said I was so glad I signed him for £15 million. Pounds. It was an amazing investment, and he's so good from range. And I also said, if you guys play career mode, you got to pick this guy up and try him. And I mean it. Like, I really, really mean it. I'm not usually one who gives suggestions for players because, as I said before, it's all about how you feel when controlling the players that's more important than the player's stats, really. Uh, you know, when you control the players, you can sort of uh, dictate how good they are, I suppose, really, by how much involvement you give them and how well you feel when controlling them, if that makes sense. And, you know, Hakan is one of those players who, like, I think this guy would suit anyone seriously any style of play you know any formation you're playing I think Hakan would be a superb player in the middle of the park he's been absolutely incredible for us ever since we signed him and yeah, I, I just I just love the guy like I really do he's one of my favorite players to use in this year's FIFA he's absolutely so fun so awesome and another goal there from range which looked absolutely 
gorgeous. A great strike from range. It cannons in off the underside of the bar. And we take a surprise lead here at the Bernabeu and make it Real Madrid nil, Torino 1. So great start to this game. Hakan opening the scoring from us with a screamer from range. And it's Real Madrid nil, Torino 1. But from kickoff, Real Madrid got themselves forward here as Gareth Bale finds Cristiano Ronaldo on the left wing. The back inside towards Luka Modric. Takes around Maximovic. Plays it inside towards Gareth Bale. And the Welshman puts the ball past Bernie and makes it Real Madrid 1, Torino 1. So directly from kickoff Real Madrid back on level terms Gareth Bale with the goal have to say really really poor defending when I was playing this game live I was thinking oh my goodness how could I stop that they just cut me open so easily I looked at I looked it back in the footage afterwards and I thought wow like seriously how did I not defend that I mean that was just such slow that's such a slow build up with no intricate passing it was literally just direct straight at them and like there were so many times to cut the ball out but I just never did and eventually Bale got the goal to make it Real Madrid 1 Torino one so Real Madrid back on level terms in this game in the 39th minute had a good chance to take the lead Cristiano Ronaldo gets past the Vray and strikes it but Bernie makes a good stop and we hook the ball away eventually so still Real Madrid 1 Torino 1 good save with the goalkeeper there and it was 1-1 going into the break and in the second after ready from kickoff here a good chance for us to make it 2-1 and get ourselves back in front for the second time Alexandro plays the ball through towards Immobile he holds it up for Dybala takes it around his man gives it to Florenzi chips it through towards Immobile first time left foot volley hits the post and and eventually Sergio Ramos clears. What a lovely goal that would have been. But it was still 1-1. But nine minutes after the restart here, another good chance. Hakan plays the ball through towards Dybala here. Takes it around his man. Gets himself into a good area to shoot. But I just couldn't get a shot away on time. Eventually the angle became a bit too tight. And Casillas made a pretty good save. But even so, the angle was really, really tight. And I made it too hard for me really. So still 1-1. But from the corner, some bad news. Maximovic goes for a header and stays down. He would get up. He would get back up and uh, complete the game as well. But Sally Daddy injury is going to see him ruled out for a few days not too key but even so never nice to see a player get injured and uh, there you go uh, still he was off the pitch uh, for a passage of play uh, including this moment where Danilo gave away a penalty uh, now sometimes we get penalties given against us which are really really harsh but there was no debate about that one that was a clear penalty I thought for sure I could win the ball first with Danilo as Aguero was going for it I thought I could slide tackle the ball away for a corner sadly not Aguero got there first Danilo took him down from behind clear penalty and Cristiano Ronaldo does the honours. So Ronaldo makes it round with two Torino one, sending Bernie the wrong way from the spot, and the home side take the lead for the first time in the game. So a poor decision with me from Danilo there. I thought, you know, I thought I could definitely get that ball to slide challenge and poke it behind for a corner, prevent the danger, get Maximo which off the pitch whilst he's still injured, but unfortunately not. Gave away a penalty, and Ronaldo did convert. So final score, Real Madrid two, Torino one. That was how the game would finish. So disappointing. Uh, in that game not to get ourselves any points whatsoever because of course that is uh, our first loss in the Champions League uh, group stage so far we won the first two we lose this one here and that's that's a real shame because like you know we, we certainly played as good as Real Madrid in that game there's no doubt about that and it was just my stupid decision for the penalty poor defending for the first goal as well and that basically just you know was was not good enough for me really you know those are the games where you need to play well in and I just didn't do the job in that one uh, despite the fact I didn't do too badly uh, when going forward and did score a really nice goal of Hakan. Defensively, I was all over the place. And uh, there you go. Uh, still following out a couple of scout, uh, scouting updates. Uh, we saw uh, confirmation of Maximo was injury as well, five days. Uh, a couple of scouting updates. As per usual for the first scouting update, I'll just leave them as they are. And I'll see how they are after two months worth of scouting. But even so, one of those players look really, really good in particular. We take on Catania, though, for the second and final, uh, sorry, the third and final game, even of today's episode here, as we take on the Serie A's bottom place club away from home. So coming into this game, after to losing to Real Madrid. Desperate to bounce back in this one, get ourselves to three points back in the league and uh, make it two league uh, two league wins out of two. Of course, we're undefeated in the league so far as well, so hoping for another win in this game. The first chance would fall to the bottom place side, though this shot going over the bar and behind for a goal kick, and it was still nil-nil. But in the 17th minute, Zardes gets on the ball for us, turns his man and gets inside, gets inside to shoot, but he goes wide the post and behind for a goal kick. So still nil-nil going to the break. It was still goalless, but 14 minutes after the restart here, a good chance for us to take the lead. Zardes plays it through towards Poloski down the left hand side takes it around his man with a quick little step over gets inside to shoot and Poloski makes it Catania nil Torino 1 so good finish by Poloski there 
And of course, Poloski, he's not going to be in the first team a lot this season with the introduction of Dybala. He's had a really good start to his Torino career. Poloski's going to drop to the bench now. Mobley's back from injury. But uh, either way, you know, if Mobley and Dybala is a strike partnership, hopefully that'll work out. But if it doesn't, like Poloski can come in. And just like last season, Poloski came in when Mobley got injured again. He did really well. That's now his third goal in the Serie A already. Like Poloski is a backup striker to fill in when a player's injured. Like I really, really like the idea of him coming off the bench in some games, but also starting these ones when Immobile and Dybala need a rest but uh, even so from kickoff Catania gave the board away we came forward and scored a second goal through Keita but it was going to be disallowed for offside as you can see Motta's strike was well saved with the goalkeeper and Keita was way offside so obviously correct decision there and it was still 1-0 and it was how the game would finish Catania 0 Torino 1 honestly not the best performance really when we're taking on uh, the bottom place side in the league but even so the win is the most important thing as you see with the stats Catania had more of the ball but zero shots in the entire game that shows why they're bottom really with no wins so far and uh, of course head-to-head -head ruling is more important than goal difference anyway in the Serie A so I guess the win was the most important thing anyway and we didn't even need to score more goals but that does end the episode guys so as always a big thank you for watching the video really hope you have enjoyed it if you enjoyed today's episode of Torino Cream then please do leave a like and I'll see you for the next episode very soon